Hello, I'm Brian Steglitz, the Interim Public Services Area Administrator, and I'm going to be presenting to you today the FY23 Budget Overview. Um, before I start, I'd like to thank those who have helped um, prepare this presentation, which include all of the unit managers in public services and some of their staff, as well as the finance staff. So thank those who have helped. Um, a lot of effort went into pulling all this information together. Before I dive into the, the agenda for this presentation, I want to uh, to reflect on the few pictures that we've intentionally selected to show on this first slide. The first picture up on the left hand corner is the Allen Creek Railroad berm project, which is an innovative solution that public services has designed to address multiple multiple issues, one being stormwater management and flood protection in the community, as well as non motorized traffic improvements um, by adding a connection to the border to border trail. The slide in the middle illustrates a pedestrian safety project where we're using solar powered rapid flash, flashing beacons. And finally, the project on the right reflects emergency response activities that are provided by public services. This is one of these projects that we're trying to, to put out of our memories, but this is the large water main break project that happened at the intersection of Maple and Jackson Road. Um, that re required significant resources to come together to address, repair, and get back in service. These, these pictures really illustrate the breadth of the services provided by the public services unit. They touch everyone in the community every day, including residents and those that come to commute and recreate and dine and enjoy the amenities that Ann Arbor has to offer. So as part of this presentation, I will be going through um, an overview of the service area and the organization the structure of the service unit. I'll be talking about a financial overview, going through the fund summaries, um, the major funds that the public services unit oversees, which include the water, sewer, stormwater, utility enterprise funds, the major and local street funds, street, billage, street bridge and sidewalk millage, as well as the solid waste millage. I'll talk a little bit about utility rates and what our projections are for the future, and then hit some service unit highlights and some horizon issues. The, per the public services area is organized into six service units um, with a small administration unit and then the five other units that you, you see on this slide. The, the engineering unit is responsible for overseeing the capital project management and maintenance programs, such as the annual road resurfacing program. The public works service unit maintains all the buried infrastructure in the city. It manages our urban forest, the compost materials recycling facility, the solid waste program, um, compost recycling collection, um, the drop off station, roads maintenance, such as pothole repair and snow plowing. So lots of services that interface with the community. The systems planning unit manages the CIP plan development for, for the whole city. Um, system planning also oversees asset management, community engagement, reviews development petitions for work in the right of way and that impact city utilities. Planning areas also include floodplain and water resources management, stormwater management, and this group also works closely with the Office of Sustainability on topics such as climate resiliency. The water treatment services area pretty intuitively provides safe drinking water to over 125,000 um, customers in Ann Arbor and um, some neighboring communities. Um, they're responsible for delivering safe water um, from the source um, to the tap of our customers. In addition, the water treatment services unit also oversees and manages the four dams along the Huron River, um, two of which generate hydropower. The wastewater treatment services unit um, or resource recovery facility will treat the wastewater generated by the community and return it to the environment and also serves over 100,000 customers in the city and um, surrounding area. The wastewater treatment service unit also um, produces um, a residual from their treatment process that is land applied, a beneficial reuse of the waste products that are generated by the wastewater treatment process. Um, you see capital projects, which is sort of a box by itself. So while the public service area oversees and manages um, the capital improvements program, there are capital projects that are also um, realized as part of the work that this group does. And in fiscal year 23, we have over $75 million worth of capital projects planned um, associated with public services in the community. 
The public services area has budgeted for fiscal year 23, um, a total of 232 and a half full-time equivalent staff. Oops, sorry about that, I went too quickly. Um, now I will dive into um, the, the utility funds. So a few notes um, as I talk about the water, the, the three utility funds. These slides represent a snapshot in time and are regularly updated as conditions change. Changing conditions could include an unanticipated infrastructure failure, such as the large water main break at Jackson and Maple that I illustrated on the first slide. It could also include revenue adjustments based on actual water uses versus projected. And our financial plan is structured to ensure that we can safely execute both our operational and capital plans. The operating fund graph illustrates water fund balance over the next five fiscal years. It illustrates our use of fund balance to cover capital expenditures in the near term until fiscal year 24 when we'll begin issuing debt to cover capital needs. Fluctuating levels over the time of our fund balance can be due to capital project schedule impacts such as we've experienced over the past few years due to the impact of the global pandemic on supply chain and our ability to safely execute capital projects in the plan and in the community. The cash flow figure on the bottom left indicates both cash in and cash out over the next five years. Cash in and cash out are projected to match beginning in fiscal year 24, which is why there appears to be only a single line um, between fiscal year 24 and 27. Moving on to the capital funding graph, um, the gray bar, you'll see a stacked bar, a gray bar, and a red bar. The gray bar represents the cash fu um, funded capital expenditures, and the red bar represents the debt service for capital expenditures. So note the increasing spending and debt service between fiscal years 25 and 29. This is due to the over a $100 million water treatment plant improvement project to replace infrastructure that was built in the 1930s. The rate projections that you will see on a subsequent slide take into account this significant capital investment that we are anticipating. The sewage disposal fund um, slides illustrate, well, the first slide, the operating fund illustrates a sewage disposal fund balance over the next fiscal, five fiscal years. And as in the water fund, it illustrates our use of fund balance to cover capital expenditures in the near term until fiscal year 24 when we begin issuing debt to cover capital needs. Cash flows for the sewage disposal fund also converge in fiscal year 24 as illustrated in the cash flow graphic. In the capital funding um, graph on the bottom right of the sc your screen, you will note the increased significant capital expenditures in FY23, which will be used to address both the administrative consent order, which requires capital investment in the sewage collection system, such as lining, sewer lining, and inspections. During this year, the wastewater plant will also initiate its headworks project, which is estimated at $15 million. Beginning in fiscal year 24, you will notice an increase in debt service to cover the future capital needs. The stormwater fund, um, the operating slides, this operating slides also illustrate stormwater, the operating fund, excuse me, slide um, also indicates that stormwater balance fund over the next five fiscal years. This slide illustrates use of fund balance to cover capital expenditures in the near term until fiscal year 24, similar to the, the other utility funds when we will begin issuing debt to cover capital needs. In the capital funding slide, um, or graphic, you will notice the increased capital expenditures in FY24, which we use to address several projects to help us abate flooding. The largest project is the Edgewood Snyder Improvements project that are estimated at just under $9 million. Also included this fiscal year are significant stream bank stabilization projects. One item to you note that is one item to note that is unique to the stormwater fund in the stacked bars that you see in the capital funding side is the yellow. Uh, bar, which indicates other debt. Other debt reflects the city working with its partner, in this case, the Washington County Drain Commission, who will issue debt on the city's behalf to address system needs that benefit both parties. Note that the city is still responsible for this debt. However, it is issued by a third party, which provides the city with some financial benefit. This slide illustrates our rate plan, our current rate plan, and our proposed uh, rate plan, which will come to council later this 
um, later this spring over the next couple months for approval. The drivers for our rates continue to be the same from fiscal year 22, which include water quality and regulatory compliance um, issues and challenges for the water fund, infrastructure reinvestment needs across all of the different, all three of the utility funds, and level of service increases. We'll, for example, we'll be um, inspecting 20% of, of the storm system using CCTV. And it also reflects maintenance of our level of service goals and expectations of the community. You will see an average bill for um, customers, a current customer, average customer, and future average customer with the projected rate um, modifications for the next fiscal year. The total rate increase for the average customer is estimated to be about 2.6%. Um, note that this includes an assumption of 18 CCF usage, which is 100 cubic feet, which is how we measure water consumption for our customers, as well as that the customer is in the tier two for the stormwater um, rates. And it also includes the one-time um, on, on time payment discount. The rate projections that you see here are similar to, um, they have not changed since what was provided um, to you last year. Um, so the rate projections are the same. And you can see for water, we continue to estimate 6% rate increases over the next five fiscal years. For sewer, there will be um, no rate increases for the next two fiscal years. And then we'll be transitioning to 3% increases in FY25. And for stormwater, you'll notice 4% rate increases for the next two fiscal years and 3% um, rate increases for fiscal year 25 through 27. Transitioning to the major and local street funds. Um, the financial plan for major and local street funds is structured to maintain and repair road based on community priorities, which are reflected in our pavement asset management plan goals. The first graph reflects fund balance and how it's distributed between major and local streets, major streets being in the green and local streets being in the blue. These funds are um, received from state shared revenue. That's what supports the major and local streets funds. This is, comes from what we call Act 51, which is from state gas and weight um, taxes. In the revenue versus expenditures line graph, you will notice the uptick in expenditures um, and revenue in fiscal year 23. This is due to the proposed bond issuance of $9 million, $6 million for major roads and $3 million for local roads for pavement asset management. This, this, the intention is to use these funds to move the needle on improving road conditions and the road conditions rating in the community by accelerating projects that were planned in future fiscal years. Um, the, the intent is that this bond would become for, before council for approval over the coming months. The pie graph illustrates how these funds will be distribu distributed amongst the different area, amongst the different areas um, in the local major street funds, which include right of way, which would be about half of the um, expenditures, traffic control, about a third, um, and then the smaller parts go to alternate transportation. The street bridge and sidewalk millage financial summary illustrates the, the fund balance over the next, um, or the, the past fiscal years and plan for fiscal year 23. As in the major and local street funds, note that the revenues and expenditures are closely matched as the city plans on used all the funds that are raised by this millage to address street bridge and sidewalk improvements. There is also an intent to issue, to issue approximately $6 million of, of a bond for additional work that can be done to support the work that is part of this millage. So the total bond that will be coming before council for approval will be the $9 million for the street major and um, local street funds plus 6 million for street bridge and sidewalk millage for a total of 15 million. Having the street bridge and sidewalk millage provides a second source of funding to the community to, do, to address community driven needs and allows us to do more than what state shared revenue can provide. As illustrated in the pie chart, almost two thirds of the millage goes to annual resurfacing program with smaller portions to sidewalk and ramp repair, bridge capital projects um, and road projects. 
the, the fact that the city has a, a millage to, to supplement the needs for um, these, for road and sidewalk and bridge improvements is not something that all communities had. So Ann Arbor is, is well positioned to address the needs with this additional source of, of um, income to, for the public services folks to use to address infrastructure condition. Solid waste fund financial summary. Solid waste is funded um, also by a millage plus a fee for service for some of the services provided in, in the downtown, for example, to businesses for solid waste collection. In this case, the city will con contract out some of those services to a third party vendor and recruits its costs through service fees. The budget for solid waste in this fiscal year includes move, transitioning four temporary positions to full time equivalent positions. These would be field operation technicians um, who are drivers responsible for picking up solid waste, compost, and recycled material. Similar to the road millage, the solid waste millage carefully balances revenue and expenditures. When or if additional services are considered, a revenue source must be identified to ensure it is financially sustainable. The fund balance will be used to improve facilities such as the drop-off station, which I'll be talking about in the future slide. If you look at the breakdown of expenditures in the solid waste, you see about a third of the funds are spent on solid waste, a, a third on material recovery, and then a smaller percentage on compost and other expenses. The other portion of the pie, which is 19%, includes sustainability, landfill oversight and management, administration, and customer service roles. So if you've seen any of, of the other budget presentations, you'll see the same theme when we are looking at the, the highlights of the projects that we will be delivering the services we will provide um, underneath each of these four pillars, sustainability, quality of life, positioning for investment, and infrastructure. And as you think about public services, we really impact the community very closely in the services we provide and are significantly influenced um, under each one of these pillars and there is really great alignment with the services we provide. On the following slides, we'll identify budget highlights that will include a blend of annual and operation and uh, annual and capital projects, both recurring and one time um, that are aligned with each of these pillars. Sometimes it's hard to differentiate the funding sources because much of what we do in public services is a blend of both operation and maintenance of infrastructure, such as roads, paths, bridges, and investment in their rehabilitation. You'll also note that many of the projects that we've identified may fall under multiple categories, um, but we've done our best to align them where we think that they're their best fit, but most things probably apply to, to more than one of these pillars. So the first pillar I will talk about is sustainability. And I would like to mention that the, the costs included in the pillar in all of the slides that you'll see with the highlights are not necessarily comprehensive of all the projects that we're doing in public services. If, this, this presentation would probably have three times as many slides uh, if we were going to include all of the work that we're doing. But as Council has an opportunity to review the details in the budget books, they will be provided. They will see um, a lot more granular information on, on many of these projects. We've also, in some cases, rolled up several budget line items into one initiative um, to share the information in a, in a more condensed version for this presentation. So while I won't also discuss all the projects, I will highlight a few on each of the slides to give you an example of the types of things that we're doing that fall underneath each one of these pillars. So for sustainability, engineering is working to modify its, its specifications for concrete to, to use uh, a low carbon embodied concrete, which is less carbon intensive to produce. This new concrete formulation has a smaller carbon footprint. And of course, we use a lot of concrete in public service in infrastructure projects. Solid waste management clearly has a clear interface with sustainability. We are seeing large con quantities of packing material associated with deliveries as an example, and we need to come up with sustainable solutions that improve our diversion rate, um, increasing recyclable and reducing solid waste for downtown businesses, and come up with an affordable program that meets their business needs and expectations. And this is what's captured in the second starred project under public works that I'm talking I'm referring to, which is improving commercial and downtown solid waste, um, including a new solid waste 
project management assistance. And we will be working closely with the community associations, the neighborhood associations downtown and businesses to ensure that we can come up with a solution that meets their needs and is um, financially sustainable. The second project under public works that I want to mention is the regional drop off station. So this is the current drop off station is in um, in a state of disrepair. It's um, not sufficiently sized to meet the needs of the community. And it's also um, the building is deteriorating. It's built on the landfill and the landfill is settling and needs to be replaced. So we've been planning for that and we were intending to, to earmark some of the fund waste solid waste fund balance for this project. Um, this is really a, a, also a, a significant sustainability focus for the, the city and some of the region. Um, so we intend to work with our regional partners. We have a grant that we have um, coming to support this investment and we're also looking for shared contributions from some of the other communities who will benefit by it from this project and we look forward to beginning this initiative in the coming fiscal year in systems planning resiliency and adaption adapt, adaption planning um, will be added to the cip in the fall we will be working with the county to frame this project in response to the flooding events um, such as the June storm, which created significant flooding in portions of the city. There are portions of the city that received rainfall in excess of a hundred year storm. And we're seeing more and large, we're seeing more frequent and larger storms and need to be positioned to ensure that our stormwater infrastructure is capable of handling these events in the future. Land application of biosolids, the first uh, project under wastewater treatment, um, is part of our annual operating budget. We um, land application is a beneficial reuse. It's been a successful program that we've used for many, many years. And we need to make sure that we're, um, and so we need to make sure that we're evaluating um, alternate. So the, the next project as I'm transitioning, which is completing a biodigester feasibility study is an alternative to land application. And because of um, potential risks of not being able to land apply biosolids in the future um, due to uh, the contents, such as one of the challenges we're facing with PFAS in our biosolids, we need to look at alternatives to make sure that we're positioned to handle the residuals. And that is the reason for the completion of the biodigester facility study, which we will begin in this fiscal year and, and continue working on in FY23. Moving on to quality of life, it's hard to talk about quality of life without mentioning Vision Zero, which is a council approved and community supported program to reduce uh, accidents and um, create a safe environment for pedestrians throughout the city. Um, the Vision Zero program is funded primarily through one-time non-recurring funds with the exception of some funds for local traffic coming. So a recurring source of funding will be important in order to realize the Vision Zero goals. And we look forward to working with the community and council to develop a long-term funding plan as part of the conversation and development of this action plan. Within public works, um, a quality of life project is increasing the non-motorized assets in the community. Um, and as we build and add more bike lanes and, and non-motorized um, transportation um, infrastructure, we need to make sure that we have the resources in order to maintain them. They, they are maintained differently and, they, and in some cases can be more costly to maintain. And in this year, we've increased our budget um, over previous fiscal years to make sure that we have the resources to maintain these assets. As we're working on all of these projects that have a direct impact on many of the on, on the community, we need to make sure that we're also developing communication plans and outreach to ensure that we are reflecting the community's desires and needs as we deliver some of these projects. And that's also built into the work that we're doing. And then the, the last item that I wanna highlight here about 
under quality of life for public works is the inspection and maintenance of our sanitary sewer system. This is very personal for a lot of folks in the community. And as we work on inspecting and maintaining our system, um, one in compliance with the administrative consent order, but this also will um, help us reduce the potential for sewer backups and overflows in the future. And we have $625,000 in the fiscal year 23 to dedicate to that activity. Flood mitigation is also a major quality of life if you issue. We are investing in storm in stormwater storage and detention activities and other also other flood mitigation activities. As part of this work, we will also be revisiting our stormwater design storms and using our utility models to account for the increasing intensity of wet weather events. This is a continuation of the same theme that I've already talked about under the sustainability pil pillar, and you will also see some of these projects as part of our infrastructure investments. One example is the Briarwood and Churchill project, which we're working on in partnership with the county, who's our regional partner on many stormwater related projects. I mentioned the importance of public engagement and public education and community engagement. So many of the projects that we're working on in public service touch the community in so many different ways, and we need to be prepared to um, work with folks to get input and make sure that it, people's um, views and thoughts are are reflected in the projects that we deliver. And we were working on increasing to augment staff's capability uh, to engage the community on all of these various projects. You also notice that the amount identified here is TBD and we really try to um, incorporate community engagement into all the projects that we do. So there's not necessarily a separate budget line item but it's built into the project budgets for the projects that we deliver. So third, the third pillar, positioning for investment. Uh, we all know that we're in a position right now where there are lots of federal funding programs um, that are being initiated for um, investment in infrastructure, and we need to make sure we're well positioned to take advantage of that. The IIJA is the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, and we are working um, and we'll be working with a consultant to make sure that we're positioned and understand how we can access funds that might be available to communities such as Ann Arbor for infrastructure projects. A couple of examples of some, um, well, one success story associated with our ability to position for investment is a project that we're doing to replace valves um, at our raw water pump station and the water system, Barton Pump Station. This is a $5 million project, a little over a $5 million project where we've been able to receive 1.3 million in loan forgiveness. This project was designed and shovel ready in anticipation of this um, potential having this financial benefit for the city of loan forgiveness. So it's a really success story for us being positioned to take advantage of state and federal funding sources for infrastructure projects. The water treatment plant, plant one replacement pilot plant is a project that we'll also be initiating in fiscal year 23. We are on the verge of the largest project in the history, the largest capital project in the history of the city's water system with replacing a portion of the water treatment plant that could co will cost the city over $100 million. This pilot plant will allow us to evaluate and determine what the best way to um, treat and meet the city's water quality goals in the most cost effective manner. Um, the results of this plant will help us more accurately size and, and select check technologies um, and it could potentially save the city tens of million dollars on final construction costs. The last pillar, which is infrastructure highlights, um, I have a couple things that I would like to highlight. So first is the, the implementation of the public infrastructure projects in the capital improvement program and you'll see we have almost $50 million worth of projects associated with pavement condition improvements, bridge maintenance and repair, um, sidewalk repair and sidewalk gaps, sanitary sewer lining, stormwater, sanitary water pipe replacement and upsizing. This is a tremendous amount of infrastructure improvement in the community. This is a reasonable amount higher than what we spent in recent years. And it's really about a commitment to addressing the community feedback and needs to replace aging and deteriorating infrastructure. 
In the public works group, we have an upright, we have funding to do ongoing repair and capital maintenance activities of the city's infrastructure, including televising, cleaning, main repair, street base repair, and pothole repair. Over $5 million in the FY23 budget to complete these types of maintenance activities on the city's infrastructure. In the public works group, um, we are continuing to work on our water meter replacement program. Um, we've replaced the majority of the residential meters in the community, and now we are focusing on the large meters. These large meters are critical because accurate and reliable meters are critical for long-term viability of the enterprise funds. And at the wastewater plant, the head work screening project and grit placement project follows in investments of $150 million in renewing infrastructure at the wastewater treatment plant. And with this project at its conclusion, we'll position the wastewater treatment plant or the resource recovery plant for the next several generations. Note that all of these projects are multi-year projects. So the, um, the values listed here in some cases represent the values that we'll be spending in fiscal year 23, but the 15 million for the Headworks project is, is that is a multi-year project and will be spent over multiple fiscal years, not all in fiscal year 23. So my last slide, I would like to talk a little bit about horizon issues. These are issues that we will be facing as we move forward into future fiscal years. The city needs to be well positioned to address. And I've, and I've categorized them into four categories and I'll start with human resources. Um, succession planning. Um, we've had um, some We've had a, a reasonable amount of turnover in, in the public services area over the last year. And we also have several people, several um, public services staff who are um, reaching um, re their retirement age. And so we'll be losing um, even more over the coming year and the coming years. And we need to be prepared to replace those folks. We have some really great success stories in staff who we have worked with, trained, and developed to be to position to take um, on leadership roles. And associated with some um, recent departures and retirements we've had and move, movement in the organization, we've had people step up and fill those roles. Um, and that's really a positive um, for the city. But as people move around and take on new roles and responsibilities, it does create vacancies in the organization. And with that, we need to make sure that we are filling those with folks who are who are qualified and can continue to provide the service that our, our customers um, demand. And focusing on workforce development is a really important part of that. Um, and I can, as a sort of a, a personal experience story in the water um, group, um, we, we had about over the last year, about 30% turnover in our water utility technicians, which are, these are the frontline folks who operate and maintain the water system infrastructure at the plant and at the dams. Um, and we've been fortunate to hire and replace the, the folks who have left um, with some great new young staff who are, who are eager and, will, and excited about learning what, about what we do in Ann Arbor. Um, but this places a burden on existing staff who have to be working to not only continue to deliver the services that, that our community expects, but also train new folks. And we need to make sure that we have um, programs and commit time in the future to develop these folks so we can continue to do, meet the service level expectations of the community. Financial and infrastructure. Um, we're all aware of the challenges that we're facing right now in the economy with inflation, with supply chain issues, when we're not an exception to having to deal with those issues um, in public services. Costs um, are, are becoming higher for things that we had not anticipated. Um, the lead time on getting equipment is very long and it's impacting our ability to deliver some projects on time um, and also on budget. So we will be continuing to work and develop solutions to these challenges, but it's something that we anticipate that we'll be seeing for some time to come. At the same time, we need to make sure that we're continuing to work on um, rehab and replacement of aging infrastructure. You saw that we're um, almost record numbers of investment, $75 million in fiscal year 23 for infrastructure projects. Um, and we need to continue to do that to, to move the needle on what the condition of our, of our aging infrastructure is in this community. So much of this infrastructure was built you know, um, at the turn of the, the century, the last century, 
we're still operating um, components of um, our water system and some of our buried infrastructure that are over 100 years old. Um, and so um, we are, and we are continuing to work on renewing, renewing that infrastructure. We need to make sure that we also um, maintain funding for and maintenance of our incre increased um, non-motorized assets. I've already talked about that um, as part of the budget highlights, um, but we will, as we, this part of our community continues to grow, we will need to make sure we continue to contribute um, and make sure we have the resources to maintain the infrastructure that we, we add um, respect to that non-motorized assets. Um, dam rehabilitation, the dams also were built in some cases um, over a hundred years ago, um, and we're still operating and maintaining those. There have been some recent experience of dam failures around the country and in Michigan, um, and we need to make sure that we're doing all the right things to make sure our dams are safe um, and also can, will last um, for the next generation. So we will be um, spending some resources on rehabilitating those in future fiscal years. So what, um, what things are on the horizon that impact the community? Well, I've already also talked a little bit about restructuring our commercial solid waste fees. We will continue to work with our partners downtown to make sure that we can come up with a solution that works for um, them, meets service expectations, and is affordable. The regional drop-off station is also a big initiative that we'll be getting this fiscal year. Um, and while there are challenges with funding the capital investment to build the the drop-off station, we also need to come up with an operational and funding structure that will um, allow it to be successful into the future. And that has yet to be worked on and determined. As we work on our urban forest management plan, there will be recommendations that come out of that, that that have future budget implications and we'll need to be prepared for that as well. And of course, I, as I've mentioned several times throughout this presentation, increasing the need, there's an increasing need and demand for community engagement associated with all of these projects. So many of so much of the work we do in public services is is outward facing and involves the community and we need to have an, an effective and robust community engagement program to engage folks um, so their voices are heard. And then finally associated with utilities. Um, there's the water treatment plant rehabilitation so we'll be beginning to work on this pilot plant and make decisions about what the service levels are going to be for the water system in the future and as we transition um, into future fiscal years we will be beginning to build this improvement and it will be a large project it will take many many years to build um, and it will have significant um, costs associated with it but these are costs that we have built into our financial plan and are planning for and are reflected in the rate projections that i've shared with you today the Gilman plume is, is um, a, a topic that has interest, broader interest in the community. It's something that we continually um, are involved in and monitoring. Um, we, are, we are awaiting whether the Environmental Protection Agency may come in and take a leadership role in, um, in cleaning up this um, contaminated plume, which is under a, por a portion of the city of Ann Arbor in the groundwater. Um, and it will involve us to continue to be involved and, and monitor and um, ensure that it doesn't, for one, impact our, the city's drinking water, um, but also that it doesn't impact public health in other ways in the community. Um, so definitely a horizon issue for, for Ann Arbor. And then finally, environmental and legislative challenges. Um, on, the, on the drinking water side, um, there have been recent fed, reg, new regulations to address emerging contaminants such as PFAS. Um, we're dealing with, um, and possibly we will see similar regulations coming down the road on PFAS associated with wastewater plant residuals management, as an example. We need to be prepared for that, which is the reason for our biodigester study. There are other environmental regulations too that we'll be continuing to monitor and see how they might impact the city and the services we provide. Um, also at the, the wastewater plant are very, very low phosphorus levels as part of their permit and returning of um, their treated water into the Huron. And we will continue to look at what we can do to try to um, meet the permit requirements um, in a reasonable and cost-effective manner that can protect the environment. Uh, and all of these, re these legislative and these type of environmental issues will things that we will need to um, continue to track and make sure that we're well positioned um, to address in the future. 
I thank you for the opportunity to present the fiscal year 23 public services budget um, to you all today. If you have any questions, please send them to Sarah Higgins and copy um, Mr. Dahoney, Ms. Prashan, and Ms. Busselmeyer. And, um, and we will be preparing responses. They will be organized by topic and responded throughout the budget season. So thank you very much. <laughs>